John Pagluso was born in 1918 to parents who had immigrated to the United States from Italy. He and his sisters grew up in Lyons, New York, a small town between Syracuse and Rochester. He was a Boy Scout and eventually earned the rank of Eagle Scout. John loved trees and planted over 100 of them around his hometown. After he graduated high school, he enrolled at the forestry school at Syracuse University. After World War II began with the German invasion of Poland on September 1st, 1939, John made major changes in his life, even though the United States was not yet involved in the conflict. He married his girlfriend, Lucille, after he joined the Army Air Corps. He enlisted at Mitchell Field in Hempstead, New York, on October 3, 1939. John trained to be an aerial photographer and became a member of the 405th Bombardment Squadron, 38th Bombardment Group. He was sent to serve in the Southwest Pacific Theater after the United States entered World War II. John was on board a B-25D Mitchell medium bomber on October 5, 1942. The plane was one of two patrolling a coastal area in the southeastern portion of what was then called the Territory of Papua and is now in Papua New Guinea. The two planes made visual contact with a large Japanese transport ship, escorted by two destroyers, and radioed the position of the ships back to their base. They engaged with the Japanese forces, but six fighter planes went after the plane John was on. The other plane was able to get away to head back to base. The other plane last saw the plane with John, along with six other crew members aboard, in a steep dive, with the enemy aircraft still in pursuit. The other plane made it back to base and brought back six more B-25s, but they were forced back by the Japanese planes. All seven of the crew members on John's plane were declared missing in action. Then, on December 13, 1945, John's wife Lucille received a notice from the War Department informing her that John's status had formally been changed from missing to dead. He had been just 24 years old on the day he was believed to have been killed. Without confirmation about what had happened to John or his body to bury, John's family was left without any real sense of closure. They lived with hope for many years and struggled to accept that John would not walk back into their home one day. In time, his parents were able to accept that their son was dead, but they were never able to fully mourn John's death while his remains were still unaccounted for. John's mother dictated a poem for her son in broken English to a relative. The poem is still cherished by John's extended family even decades later. It reads in part, My son, he is missing. I don't know where. O oh Lord, bless everywhere. Both of John's parents passed away without finding closure and being able to lay their son to rest. In 2013, the Army contacted the Pagluso family, asking them to provide DNA samples for potential DNA comparison to unidentified remains. One of John's sisters was still alive at the time and was able to provide one. There were no matches at the time, and the family heard nothing else for over a decade. John's niece, Norma Davis, who was born three years after he died, later provided a DNA sample as well for potential mitochondrial DNA testing. Then, in March of 2025, Nearly 83 years after Army Air Corps Staff Sergeant John Pagluso was killed, his remains were finally identified. His niece Norma was notified of the identification on her birthday, and she later learned that the identification had actually been made in the lab on the birthday of her late grandmother, John's mother. 
Search efforts in 1944 had located the site where the plane John had been aboard had crashed two years earlier. Only one set of human remains was found. A final search took place in 1948, but located no further information about the plane and no additional human remains. The remains located in 1944 were given the designation of unknown X-133 and interred at an American military cemetery in the Philippines, known today as the Manila American Cemetery and Memorial. In 2021, the Defense POW MIA Accounting Agency had recommended that these remains be exhumed for testing, believing they could be associated with a missing soldier. John was one of the potential matches they had identified. The exhumation took place in December of 2022, and the remains were escorted to the DPAA laboratory in Hawaii for analysis. DNA analysis and comparison to samples provided by John's family eventually confirmed that the remains were those of Army Air Corps Staff Sergeant John Peluso. John's remains were flown to Rochester, New York, and community members watched the procession that transported them to his hometown of Lyons. On November 7th, 2025, he was laid to rest with full military honors next to his parents in Old Elmwood Cemetery. In accordance with the wishes of his remaining extended family, the ceremony was open to the public so that they could pay their respects to the fallen soldier. For John's niece, Norma, seeing her uncle finally being laid to rest brought up unexpected emotions of grief and loss, but it also brought her and the rest of her family a sense of peace. Clara Edwards grew up on a farm in Texas as one of 18 children, but she dreamed of life outside of her hometown. In her 20s, she saved up all the money she made working in a local cafeteria, and in 1946, she was able to use it to buy a train ticket so that she could move out to California. It was while she was on that train that Clara met the man who would one day be her husband, Joseph Gant. Joseph had joined the army four years earlier and served in the Pacific Theater during World War II. He was on the train with some fellow soldiers, who had also recently arrived back in the United States following their service during the war. Clara and Joseph were in a relationship for the next two years, with Clara refusing Joseph's proposals of marriage. She believed he must already have a wife. Eventually, she wrote to the army inquiring about his marital status, and finally agreed to marry Joseph once they confirmed that he was unmarried. Following their marriage, Joseph and Clara Gant lived at Fort Lewis in Washington State. Then, when the Korean War began, Joseph was sent to Korea as a field medic with the 503rd Field Artillery Battalion, 2nd Infantry Division. Before he left, Joseph told Clara that if something happened to him overseas and he never came home from the war, he wanted her to remarry. She told him she would not. In December of 1950, Clara received a letter from Joseph and $100 for Christmas. Clara did not know it at the time, but her husband was a prisoner of war by the time she received that last letter. Joseph's division had been involved in heavy fighting with Chinese forces north and east of the town of Kunuri, North Korea. On November 30th, 1950, they began fighting their way out so that they could withdraw to the south. To do so, they had to fight their way through several Chinese roadblocks. Several soldiers went missing during that effort, including 26-year-old Sergeant First Class Joseph Gant. In 1953, repatriated American soldiers who had previously been held in prisoner of war camps, reported that Sergeant Gant had in fact been captured by Chinese forces on November 30th, 1950. 
He was held as a prisoner of war at Camp 5 in Pyongyang, North Korea. He died as the result of malnutrition in March or April of 1951. However, when the Chinese and North Koreans returned the remains of American prisoners of war in 1954, Sergeant Gant's remains were not among them. Clara Gant, at first, still went on as though her husband would be coming home. When she could no longer live in military housing, she returned to California and bought a house in Inglewood. Joseph had not wanted to buy a house because he did not want the hassle of doing yard work. Clara purchased the home so that Joseph would have somewhere to come home to, and immediately hired a gardener so that Joseph could spend his free time however he wanted once he came back. Clara never remarried, even as years passed and the witness testimony about her husband dying in a POW camp emerged. She prayed that she would live long enough to see her husband's remains found so that she could see to his burial herself. She decorated an entire wall in her bedroom with photos of her husband and his various military certificates. She worked as a caregiver, both for children and for individuals with disabilities. She and Joseph had wanted to have children, so she found her work with kids to be particularly fulfilling. Over the years, Clara traveled to Washington, D.C. dozens of times to attend meetings held to update the families of missing Korean War soldiers. Her family questioned her for continuing to attend these meetings decades after her husband was captured. But as far as Clara was concerned, Joseph was still her husband, and she would travel across the country for these meetings for him, no matter what even if she could no longer walk and needed a wheelchair. In 2013, Clara received a call specifically checking to see if she would be at the meeting that October. To Clara, this was an indication that the Army finally had news to give her. She flew to D.C. for the meeting and was told that after 63 years, the remains of her husband, Sergeant First Class Joseph Gant, had finally been located. In 2006, a citizen of South Korea had turned over multiple sets of human remains to U.S. authorities. The remains appeared to be those of U.S. servicemen. They were taken to the Joint POW-MIA Accounting Command to be analyzed. One of these sets of remains was confirmed to be Sergeant Gant. The identification was made using dental records and mitochondrial DNA, thanks to DNA samples provided by some of Sergeant Gant's cousins. On December 20th, 2013, the remains of Sergeant First Class Joseph Gant arrived at Los Angeles International Airport before dawn. His widow Clara was there to meet him. She waited on the runway in a wheelchair and stood up and wept over her husband's casket after it was taken off the aircraft. When asked what she was thinking as she stood over her husband's coffin, Clara said that she told him she missed him so much and that she had expected him to come home. She also said, He's here, but not the way I want him to be here, but the Lord brought him home. A week later, a private funeral service was held for Sergeant Gant, followed by a public graveside service with full military honors at Inglewood Park Cemetery. Clara Gant passed away in September of 2015, less than two years after her husband's remains returned back home to her. She was 97 years old. She was laid to rest alongside her husband.